is back today on Yu-Gi-Oh! ENT. Previously on Yu-Gi-Oh! Nightmare Troubadour. Floodmont 14 got really lucky. It was able to pull Jinzo, the card you see on your left. Today, we continue to open some packs. Will he be able to pull the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon? Find out today. Spoilers, he will not because he's already bald all of dragons this. But maybe he'll be able to pull Chaos Emperor Dragon on the way of the end. Find out now. <laughs> Okay, don't know why I decided to go with the epic intro there, but hey guys. How's it going? Fun Mod 14 here. <laughs> and we're we're back with some more pack buying here, so. Alright. Ooh, DD Assailant. That is awesome. Yeah, so when this card is destroyed in battle with your opponent's monster, you remove both cards from play automatically. So that is good. Also, Spell Counter Absorbing Life, pretty good card. And we got an Ojama Yellow, Chaz would be proud. Uh, so we, yeah, so today we'll open Device Tactics, Roar of Demise, and the Forever Ones. Okay, Device Tactics. All right, let's do it. All right, we still got 8409 category points. Gift of the Martyr is interesting. Uh, Gravity X is interesting too. Uh, monsters on your opponent's side of the field can't change their battle modes. So if they got like three monsters in attack mode, take out the strongest one and then the two weaker ones, they can't switch to defense mode. So honestly, that's pretty good. Uh, Gift of the Martyr. Of course, if your opponent has three monsters on the field, you're probably losing at that point, but eh, that might help you turn it around and have them take damage. What's nice about that, you know, scenario I just said is, yeah, they'll be taking damage instead of hiding in defense mode. Ooh, Metamorphosis is really good. I can't believe that's a... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Today's our lucky day, dude. BLS Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning. Check this out, guys. This card can only be a special summon by removing one light and one dark monster. Once during each of your turns, you can activate one of the following effects. Remove a monster on the field from play. Awesome. If you activate this effect, this card can't attack this turn. Hey, that's no problem. Uh, secondary effect. If this card destroyed your opponent's monster as a result of battle, it can attack once again in a row. Oh my god, that's so good. Wow. Great, great card. Um, I'm not even sure I'm going to buy any more of this pack. I mean, BLS, that's basically... And we got BB Assailant, too. I mean, well, I'll keep buying it just because, but yeah. I think we basically got everything we want out of this pack. I don't know. Maybe something really crazy. Something else really crazy is in this pack that I'm just not thinking of. But I think we basically got everything we wanted there. Uh, Autonomous Action Unit is... Eh, it's like monster born for your... Well, it's like premature burial for your opponent's graveyard, so... But you can't really loop it. Well, you can, but I wouldn't advise looping it, because the life point cost is so high, so yeah. Alright, let's see what else we get here. Should have mostly new cards, since I haven't, oh, haven't touched these packs. Ooh, United! I'm glad we did keep buying this pack. Man, United We Stand is honestly really good. Yeah, increase the attack and defense of the equipped monster by 800 points for each face-up monster you control. So if you, like, have... Let's say you have... Um, let's just do something basic, like X-Head Cannon, which has 8, 1,800, and you equip this to it, it'll go up to 2,600. But then if you activate Scapegoat, that gives you X-Head Cannon plus four other monsters. That's a total of five. So that gives you 4,000 extra attack points. So x Cannon can will go to 5,800. That is crazy. That's crazy good. United We Stand is such a good card. I'm, I'm glad we kept buying this. Uh, double attacks, kind of interesting. Wow, but these last two. Force Ceasefire, yeah. No traps, discard a card. No traps can be activated until the end phase. Pretty good. Close out a game. Self-destruct button, though, is like trolly good. 
Uh, yeah, you can only activate when your life points are lower than your opponent's, and the difference is 7,000 or more. Yeah, both players' life points become zero, so <laughs> that, that is interesting. That is interesting. Alright, next pack, next pack. This is going well, this is going really well. Alright, another Gravity X. Ojama Black, I think we have all the Ojamas now. Uh, Soul Resurrection is good. It's kind of like Call of the Haunted, uh, but for normal monsters. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, yeah. Still pretty good, though. Uh, the best time to play this card, like if you resurrect something powerful, like a Blue Eyes, uh, play it during your opponent's end phase, and then next turn you can just switch it back to attack mode. Pretty good, pretty good. All right, last two packs out of this one. Let's see. Hero emerges. Jaden will be proud. Now I play a hero emerges, as in emerges onto the field. Oh, also Chaz will be proud. <laughs> oh, geometry of Chaz it up, Chaz it up. Yeah, so I guess if you want to make an Ojama deck, which I don't know how good it would be in this game, but I guess if you want to, this is definitely the pack you want to keep buying. A lot of trap cards in this deck. Uh, Tower of Babel is pretty interesting. So each time either player activates a spell card, put a spell counter on it, and then when the fourth spell counter is put on this card, destroy it and inflict 3,000 points of damage to the player that activated the spell. So the best thing you can do with this is to like flip it up during your, the start of your turn, then activate, you know, uh, as many spells as you can, well not as many, up to three spells, and then don't activate any more spells until your opponent does. And then that way, when your opponent activates a spell, that will, they'll take 3,000 damage. So, pretty good. Also, I guess it's good if you want spell counters for some kind of engine. Anyway, next we have Roar of Demise. This pack contains powerful monsters and numerous spell trap cards to increase your dueling strategies and help you attain victory. Learn the fine points of these cards to make your dick come alive. All right. Oh, I should have read this at the start too. This series contains more continuous trap cards and equip cards than the average. Depending on how you use them, you can greatly control the flow of the duel. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Anyway, yeah, let's learn the fine points of these cards and make our deck come alive, guys. Let's do it. Ah, can we pull uh, Chaos Emperor Dragon today too? My goodness, Chaos Green, interesting. Good Goblin Housekeeping is a good cycle card. Works really good with emergency provisions, so, uh, especially if you have both on the field. Uh, anyway, let's go to Minimum View for a second. Desert Sunlight, Labyrinth of Nightmare. Uh, Sanctuary in the Sky is interesting for fairy decks, and um, Smashing Ground is always good. Yeah, it destroys. Basically, if you have Fissure in, this, in your deck, and you happen to pull this, I would replace Fissure with this, because odds are it's gonna be better 99% of the time. Uh, Priming Seed is also very funny. Uh, and we might be able to do some shenanigans since we pulled Blackluster Soldier too. So. I'm sure some of you guys have heard of the Primal Seed loop, where if you have two Primal Seeds and like Macro Cosmos or Banisher of Light, you can do some really wacky stuff. So, uh, yeah, nothing too interesting out of that one. Next pack, next pack. Alright, down to 6,600 points. Human Wave Tech is this. Oh, finally! Ooh, one of my favorite flood card guys. Oh, so this is the pack you get. Okay, I'm gonna be buying the, the crap out of this pack in later episodes. Yeah, Salvage. I love Salvage. Salvage is one of my favorite flood cards. Yeah, add two water monsters with a tech of 1,500 or less. Uh, each in your graveyard to your hand. So basically, like, if you have something like Revival Jam, like two Revival Jams, you can just take them out of your graveyard. You know, but I I'm assuming the Revival Jams would have been, like, tributed or destroyed by a card effect, but still. Also, Order of the Smash is pretty good. Yeah, select a level two or lower normal monster. Uh, when this card resolves, you tribute that card and destroy one or two spell and traps on the field, on your opponent's side of the field. Really good, really good. Infernal, wait. Huh, when you take 4,000 or more battle damage, remove all 
monsters in each player's deck. I thought Inferno Tempest was 3,000 or more battle damage. Hmm. We might have to try this card out, guys, just to see if it works like it's supposed to. Because it's worded wrong. It's worded wrong. In um, in the real game, uh, Inferno Tempest, the, the threshold's only 3,000 damage. Ooh, Compulse. No Salvage, yes. All right. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be buying a lot of this pack. Uh, Compulse, always good. Return a monster on the field to its owner's hand. Very good. You can, what's really good about this is you can wait till they tribute, like, do a two tribute summon, and then they're really screwed. Just bounce it right to their hand. So. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right, let's see if we can pull something awesome. Another salvage. I will take it. I will take it. So that gives us three salvage, so... That's good. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. That way we can really mix up the flood deck. Ooh! Wow, that's a really good card. Check this out, guys. Return from the different dimension, and yes, it is legal in this game, so... This is a powerful card. Yeah, pay half your life points. Hang on, I need a little drink. Hang on. There we go. Pay half your life points. Yeah, special summon as many of your monsters as possible that have been removed from the from play to, on your side of the field in attack position. At the end of the turn, remove all monster from play, all monsters that were special summoned. But yeah, if you win, or what you could do is like special summon as many of them as you need to, and then like, for example, let's say you special summon three of them, then you know you tribute all three for like Guilford the Lightning, or you know, or Moisture Creature, like a really powerful effect. So this is a very good card. Very good card. All right, down to 6,009. Hey, get it, guys? 6,009 at 69. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Ashinado. Uh, honestly, it's not bad. Uh, 3,300 is really high for any level 8 monster. And also it has a burn effect if you're... Yeah, if you, if it attacks something in defense mode. So honestly, that's pretty good. All right. Now, I don't know if this is the last pack or not. I'll have to minimize after this, or maximize. Last turn. Wow. Another really broken card. So I know I'm going over a lot of cards, but some of these are just so good, you have to talk about them. Check this out. So, yeah. This card can only be activated during your opponent's turn when your life points are a thousand or less. Select a monster on your side of the field and send all other cards in, on the field and in the respective hands to the respective graveyards. After that, your opponent special summons a monster from their deck in face of attack position and attacks your monster. Any battle damage is zero. The player, now this is what makes this card broken, the last line. The player whose monster remains alone on the field at the end phase of this turn wins the duel so any other case results in draw so if you have something that number one prevents your opponent from special summoning like let's say you play non-aggression area which does work on your opponent's turn they can't special summon so you basically just win or let's say you let's say you want to make it a draw and does this monster have to be face up let's see no, it doesn't even have to be face up. So let's say you set Penguin Soldier on your field, or Man Eater Bug, or Night Assailant, or Wall of Illusion. Let's say you set Wall of Illusion. You have Wall of Illusion in defense mode. Um, you can select, you know, one of those cards, and Wall of Illusion's gonna bounce it, which means, you know, yeah, neither player is gonna have a monster on the field, so that'll be a draw. Uh, man Eater Bug will destroy your opponent's monster, so that's a draw. Like, there are just so many shenanigans you can do with this card. It's ridiculous. Alright, last pack of Roar of Demise. Can we pull it? Can we pull Chaos Emperor Dragon on the way of the end? Ooh! That's still pretty good. Magical Scientist is in this game. Yes, guys. Uh, pay a thousand points, special summon 
one level 6 or lower fusion monster from your fusion deck in face of attack or defense. It can't attack directly and is returned to your fusion deck. You may notice that this card does not say once per turn. So, this card's good for a variety of reasons. It used to be used with the uh, uh, Catapult Turtle to do a whole bunch of damage all at once. Uh, but honestly, even if you don't use it for that, like let's say you have Magical Scientist's you know, face down, and you find some way to protect it with, like, negate attack. Well, on your next turn, you can, like, flip summon it, and then just pay 1,000, you know, bring out, like, a Kaminari attack or some level 6. Well, now you have two monsters on the field, so you can tribute those two for, like, Blue Eyes, Girl Drift, whatever you want, you know, so even if it's just used just for that, it's still really good because it's free tribute fodder for tribute summoning. Or, or for your effects, you know, like Cannon Soldier or, or whatever. So, very good character. Alright, last pack, the Forever Ones. There are many cards in this pack that will test your skill as a duelist. This pack focuses on spell trap cards. Okay, select cards that match the features of your deck to create the perfect selection. Alright, let's do it. Alright, let's see if we can pull Sacred Phoenix of ne Nephthys. Nephthys. Rock Bombardment. Interesting. Let's you mill a rock type card and it also inflicts burn damage. So that's honestly pretty good. And this is used to uh, summon the card on the cover of this pack. Uh, Elemental Mistress Doria. And she counts as all the attributes, basically. That's her effect. So, which is good with like Furin Kazan and other stuff. So, Hollowed Life Barrier. That's good. Uh, it's kind of like, ooh. Wow, Divine Wrath is really good. Yeah, discard a card, negate the activation of an effect monster, and destroy it. Very good card. Can help you get rid of something annoying like a Cyber Jar. Like if your opponent plays a Cyber Jar, you can be like, nah, I like my field, I'm gonna keep it. Feather of the Phoenix is also pretty good. So you can discard a card from your hand, Select a card from your graveyard and return to the top. So one of my favorite combos with this is like, and I'm glad we pulled Sinister Serpent because that's exactly what I like with it. You can discard like Sinister Serpent, put Pot of Greed on top of your deck. That's pretty good. Honestly, that's really good. <laughs> All right, next pack. saying before, uh, how Life Barrier is interesting. Uh, discard a card from your hand during this turn. Any damage you take from your opponent becomes zero. Now, I know that may sound like what, but basically this card works like Wabaku, but it also protects you from effect damage. So, it's honestly worth the discard. It's really good. It's like an upgraded Wabaku because it also protects you from effect damage. Uh, Wabaku does not protect you from effect damage. Ooh, Phoenix Wing Wind Black. Oh, and we got it. We got it. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. All right, two things to talk about here. Phoenix Wing Wind Blast is really good. Discard a card, return one card on your opponent's side of the field to the top of the owner's deck. Yeah, that's really good. Also, Sacred Phoenix of Nephthys. Uh, yeah. If this card is destroyed by a card effect, special summon it during your next standby phase. If you special summon it this way, destroy all spell and trap cards on the field. That is awesome. And uh, I don't know if it's in this game, but there is a card that lets you uh, summon this card from your deck. It's called Hand of Nephthys. Uh, and basically its effect is a tribute itself and one other monster, and you can uh, summon Sacred Phoenix of Nephthys from your deck. Ooh, Threatening Roar is good. And Greed's also good. We saw that in the uh, puzzle. Mind Crush, also very good. Declare a card name. Yeah, if your opponent has the name in their hand, discard all of that card. How much time are we at? Uh, 19 minutes and 40 seconds? Okay. Yeah, I think we have enough time to finish this one. I should have enough memory on my phone. All right, let's see what we get here. Another Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. Uh, Peculiar Circle of Enchantment protects you from effect damage. 
that doesn't come up that much in this game. But against certain matchups, this card is very clutch. Very clutch. Okay. Alright, the Forever Ones. Let's see what we get here. Astral Barrier is interesting. And there's the one of the cover cards. Yeah. With Doriop. Attribute of this card is also treated as wind, water, fire, and earth. Call her Captain Planet. Or, or uh, Empress Planet. <laughs> or, uh, no, let's just call her Empress Doria. There you go. <laughs> Alright. That honestly sounds like a good support card for that card. Empress Doria. <laughs> Some of this by sacrificing my elemental mystery for y'all. Level conversion lab is interesting. And by the way, look at the card art on this card. Like you see the the monster in the background. Doesn't that look like um oh what's his name from Dragon Ball GT? Baby, yeah, yeah, baby. Look at the card art. That doesn't that that looks exactly like Baby from GT, right? Like I'm not the only one who thinks that, right? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> All right, last pack of the Forever Ones, guys. Let's see if we can get something good. And this will be it for today. After this, we will save and, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, Threatening Roar is pretty good, yeah. Uh, one thing I will say about this card, though, is make sure you activate it before your opponent enters the battle phase. Because, like, if, if your opponent declares an attack and then you play this card, the, the first attack will still go through, so definitely activate it like as soon as they summon something or, you know, be just before they get into the battle phase, for sure. Uh, also, this is like premature burial for rituals, so that's good. Alright, and I don't think we'll get a card list, but honestly, we got some pretty good cards today. So, I'm going to save. save on seven and eight there we go and honestly i know what i said a couple episodes ago about doing a hard save and not wanting to you know and i probably should since it's been so long i probably should oh oh, oh. let me click on the home icon yeah okay, okay. yeah i probably should uh not hard save but I mean, honestly, the cards, the pulls we got over the last couple of episodes were so good. I mean, like, last episode, we got Sinister Serpent, Jinzo, Delinquent Duo. Like, there's no way I'm not, not saving that. You know what I mean? Like, dude, and we got BLS, Black Lester Soldier, this episode. Like, dude, I am saving that. I don't care. I don't care. Oh, man. All right. Well, with that, guys, I want to thank you all for joining me. And in the next episode, uh, in between uh, episodes, I'm definitely going to make some different kind of decks, because with all those cards, we can definitely make some interesting decks. So, I will do that. And... I'm not sure what we're going to do next time. I'm not sure if we're going to do the puzzles, or we're going to continue with the story to search for the Thief of Our uh, Prize from the KC Beginner Cup. I'm not sure, but I'm definitely going to be making some unique decks in between episodes. But yeah, thank you guys all for joining me today, and I'll see you all next time. Have a good day.